Okay, I'm live. Sorry I'm late. Lives, but I'm ready to work on my channel. I'm always on somebody else's channel. So um I'm gonna work on my own channel for a while. So just chatting with Lindy, so I'm gonna let her know that I'm done for right now. All right, girl, I am actually live talking to you right now. So I will talk to you later. Bye bye. Okay, turn this on silent. Um, better leave it on though so I can see if I get a sale or something, right? I want to know about that. Okay. A whole video. So yeah, yesterday when I did the soul video, which wasn't live, it was recorded. And then, hi Kim. And then I said, I'm going to eat lunch and go live in a little bit. But then I ate lunch and then I was looking at my YouTube and all of our friends were like stacked back to back going live. You know, Wade Ventures and his panel last night and then Flippin' Hippos had Rockstar on her channel and then there was somebody else. But anyways, it's just all up the line. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to play along with all these people and have fun. So here's the haul today. Um, if you are... Hi, Tanya. If you're new to my, I've got my iPad so I can keep an eye on the chat. There might be trolls. I don't know. Um, so if you're new to watching me, just a little... Just a little quick blip on this. So I sell mostly clothing. I have a clothing store and a hard goods. Hashtag deal is the hard goods. Mile High Scene is the clothing store on eBay and Poshmark. eBay is my first love, okay? I am not so much of the um, quick flip, high volume quick flip. I don't think I've ever had more than 300 items in my store at one time. I've been a member of eBay since 2002. I've been a reseller of some sort since I was in my early 20s um, at the flea markets, brick and mortar. This started in the mid 80s before there was the internet. So I do have a lot of experience, but I am older. And so I'm not trying to build an empire. I'm trying to build something just that I have fun and I enjoy and to supplement our social security when Steve decides to retire 10, 15 years, who knows? We'll see. He works for a smaller boutique kind of corporation, if you will. And so who knows how long that he's known the owner forever. So who knows how long those boys might decide to work and, and run that business? Who knows? Anyways, um, so this is to supplement, you know, down the road. Um, if Steve does choose to retire and join in, not my business, <laughs> but I will help him, guide him to what I think will suit him more. Probably Amazon FBA. He doesn't have a passion for like clothing and all that. He'll probably want to do motorcycle parts, Harley stuff, car things, electronics, perhaps. He'll probably want to do Amazon FBA, buying wholesale and flipping. Maybe he'll like books. I don't know. I know this would not be his jam. And also, as much as I love my husband, um, because of his personality, he would try to micromanage me. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. So um, I try not to sell. I don't intentionally buy anything with the think, thinking that, it, oh, this is going to be $10, $15. I try to keep everything over $20, unless it's a quick flip item that's replenishable, you know, preferably new with tags or something that's just really hot, one listing, variation listing, something like that. Do you understand? If you're in the business, you all understand what I'm saying. So my items tend to be a little bit more unique. Um, some people might call them ugly. I'm not in love with that term, um, but more unique. Um, try to find some of the higher end pieces. So let's start with, I did some retail arbitrage. I live in Colorado Springs between Denver and Colorado Springs is a smaller town called Castle Rock. It's about 15, 20 minutes up the highway. They have the largest outlet mall. It's like a, well, it's an outdoor mall. 
Um, you can't go in one door and go to all the places individually. It's like a huge shopping center, but it's not in a strip. It's set up more, you know, like this. So they call it a, an outlet mall. And they have uh, Levi, Tommy Hilfiger, Coach. They have all of the big brand names. Um, there was one, which one did I love? The ski one they have, darn it. I forgot to go to it as well, too. But this is a good time of year to hit the clearance racks for our retail arbitrage, those who like to do that, because, you know, tax time, these stores are going to be really doing some deep discounts, some deep inventory cleaning, right? So now is one of the my favorite times to go hit even Marshalls and Ross and TJ Maxx. But I like the outlet stores better. Uh, a lot of times in their back clearance racks, they'll go ahead and say, They'll add and say, take another 40% off, take another 50, take another 70. Some of them will get to as it gets closer to like, you know, it's their inventory time, their tax time. So to them, that's a strategy, um, a money-making strategy, and it can be good for us. So let me just check this. Sorry if we get trolls, you guys. I can't really do this live. And I've got my iPad here. I'll take a peek every once in a while, okay? And then when we're all done, if anybody's still hanging out, we'll do a Q&A, ask me anything. I'll sit down with my iPad and we'll chat if anybody's still here. So let's start with the retail arbitrage. I really had a good time up there. I found, I was looking, looking, and I just couldn't find anything interesting. Nothing that I thought was unique and would go for, you know, $30, $40 at least, right? And I just couldn't leave. It was just nagging me. Do you ever, like, do you, that intuition? I, I feel like I have that. So I went to a part of the outlet that I usually don't go to, and there it was in a strange section. I don't know why they put these with the underwear. I guess they put them with the robes. But these are Island Fisher um, capes and serapes. So I got three of these and five of these. And these are the organic cotton. These are new with tags, right? And they're current, maybe one season old at the most. And so I got those for $15. Now, to some people, $15 is like, wait, whoa. Well, you know the thrift stores are all raising their prices. And to get something new with tags and a halfway decent label, such as Island Fisher, I felt okay with $15 and they're multiples, right? And it's the organic cotton line, which is very important to some people. So I think retail on these was around, just around $200 full retail, but I will probably list these. I will probably list these for about, I'll start at 40 and 50 and see what happens. And, um, I might go down just a little bit just to kind of go ahead and blow them out, get my money back on those. It's a little bit early in the season, but I'm pretty excited about those. So this is an instance where I'm probably going to go a little bit lower cost since I have multiples. I'm probably going to do somewhere between a quick flip and the way I usually roll, which is a little bit more long tail, kind of meet in the middle on these. So I was really excited about these. Um, if anybody likes loves Eileen Fisher and you like the organic cotton line and you like these capes or serapes, you can hit me up and I'll give you a good deal on one before they go up, which will probably be next week. By the end of this week or next week. Let me hang these up over here. Okay, I'm still here. I'm just hanging these up out of the way. And the other thing I picked up, this is a no name, but I picked these up. Hi. Hi, Jim. I picked these up. I think I'm going to do giveaway on these. I thought this was really cute. They were only $5 new tags. The name is just, mm, mm, mm. I mean, that's, that's nothing. But I like what it says. It's a foil print, kind of a platinum rose gold. And it says girls just want to change the world. So I picked up all extra large so that I think I'm just going to do these as giveaways. Um, to help grow my channel and to focus on my own channel. Um, I thought I would do some giveaways to those that have supported me this long. It's been like three or four years, um, but I'm always on other people's channels. But anyways, I want to give back. I said that on my first giveaway a couple weeks ago that I'm going to do some giveaways. I will probably only promote them, though, here on YouTube. And if you're not familiar, YouTube now has like 
where we can make posts kind of like a little forum or like a little Instagram. So if you don't know that, you might be seeing video notifications only, but there's postings too. I'm thinking about just so that I my giveaways just really go to my reseller friends that hang with me. Um, I'm thinking about just utilizing that. So if you're not familiar with that, you might check it out and make sure that you're seeing people's that you follow, that you're seeing our video notifications and our postings. Because I think that's where I'm gonna talk about my giveaways. Because this is why, not to be crabby, but <laughs> um, when you do giveaways on social media like Facebook or Instagram, there are people that do nothing but look for these hashtags and these giveaways. And there are people that they're not really interested, like in the things that we do in our lifestyle, in our niche. Um, but they're, you know, the giveaway people. And so you get a lot of applications, a lot of posts, a lot of people applying, playing along that that's all they do. They're just the sweepstakes and the giveaway people. Right. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that with my limited um, giveaways, I want to make sure it goes to, you know, my reseller friends or people in the reseller community, if you're new, but at least in the reseller community, right? So I think that's where I'm going to sneak in and hide my little giveaways. Okay. So I think I'm, I think that's what these are earmarked for. Let me hang these up. Because I think that's what I'm, they're super soft and stretchy too. Super cute. Let me look at the chat. Um, okay, so I said I might drop a name on one of my retail arbitrage, one of my favorite outlets. So I'm a little, I'm a little iffy on that because some of the better ones I will be forthcoming, someone tipped me off. So I need to double check on that, but I will give one of them because this is, these are limited across the United States, but it's Steinmart. I think I mentioned that briefly, Steinmart. I happen to have a Steinmart in my area and they have a huge, the one that I go to has a huge clearance in the back. And they're one of the ones that will also flip up the sign that says, hey, take another 40, 50% off this already ridiculously low price. And Steinmart is, um, not a lot of people are doing this anymore. It's kind of a boutique -y chain, if you will. OK, it's not at the mall. They sell a little bit higher end brands. I mean, not, you know, not a thousand or more, not like Chanel and Gucci, a little bit, you know, higher end, like two to three hundred dollar dresses and things like that will be their high end cap. So it's a little bit better quality than the mall brands. Um, and they do keep a lot of free people and things like that. Kind of like Nordstrom's is what it sort of reminds me of a little bit cheaper and a little bit different brands, but very unique. So they have some great items. And so because they're a smaller chain, sometimes they don't get a really good sell through. I mean, that's on them. They're supposed to, when you do retail and you're a buyer, you're supposed to predict all that stuff. But, you know, just like we in our reseller business, you know, they don't hit home runs all the time. So a lot of good things will end up on that back rack. And a lot of them, especially the one that I have. And right now they are at 40%, another 40% off. And they've got hard goods too. So you might look online for Steinmart, see if there's one in your area, see if there's one close. It might be worth a little road trip if you can find other things in the area as well. Okay, so Steinmart. All right, let's see. Yeah, Kim, you know what I'm talking about on the giveaways. I don't mean any offense to anyone, but you get what I'm saying. Um, I lost my monetization in Adpocalypse last year. Thank you, Paul Logan. So, but I'm, and I haven't really focused on my channel. I've been on other people's channels, so I'm working to get it back. So one of my other goals is when I do get it back is to share whatever, you know, YouTube money that I get. Um, it's not a lot. It was never a lot, but we'll see how it goes to share that back. I'll share a percentage. I, I won't ever be able to, to be like, here, look, here's a screenshot of exactly the YouTube AdSense money that this channel made because that's against YouTube and AdSense um, terms of service. 
but I'll, I'll give you a ballpark figure and I'll be honest. So um, I've got some new series coming up and I'm going to share anything with those people that are on the panel. And I think I've hinted about that. I've got a new series that's going to be coming up that has generations. I Tentatively, I'm calling it Generation 1099, but I want to talk to the rest of the crew and we'll come up with a name. I'm having a meeting with the last person um, after I get done with this, which is um, Julie Kasashik. If you follow her on Instagram, she's already adored and loved. We've been work, trying to do, I've been trying to get her for over a year. And um, then she moved, eBay opened, I got married, but I think I finally got her. She settled. Um, Holidays are over, so we're having a last final meeting with her and uh, make sure that she agrees with the other people that I've chosen because I chose some other people without her because I was leaving her alone because she's the holiday. She had family. So um, because I started this with her and I've been after her for a year, um, I want to run these people by her, but I think she's I think she's going to trust my judgment and like it too. So tentatively generation 1099 i'm going to let everyone else give me the input on what we're going to call that it's going to be a once a month meeting i've got a barely millennial someone from the 30s someone from the 40s from the 50s so we're all going to talk about you know um the things that we do on ebay some of them are also amazon and poshmark and some of them have other interesting side hustles the one that's barely a millennial Oh my gosh, she has a really unique side hustle. I think you're going to find interest, interesting. It has to do with rental cars. So she will be back on vacation from the 14th. So look for us to put that on the docket sometime after the 14th. So if you're new to following me, I hope you'll subscribe and bookmark my channel and look for that series. It's going to be fascinating. Anyways, that's all the news. Let's get started on, um, let me check on this. Okay, let's get started on the haul. So this was a thrifted haul. Look at this. I'm going to just take my time. If you're watching this later, this is a big haul. Whatever. I'm in the mood to chat. I'm working on my channel. If you're watching this later, I tell you guys all the time, I do it to other people. It's nothing offensive. You can go down into the corner of YouTube and that little cog and you can set the speed and you can like listen to all this faster. Uh, I quite often will listen to people at 125, 1.5 to get the information that I need if I'm in a hurry and I'm just wanting to breeze through labels, you know, and I may slow down if I see something really interesting that I want to understand more what they're saying but usually you can understand anything especially at 125 and 1 1.5 okay so if you're watching this later this may turn out to be a long uh, video you can breeze through that way anyways i appreciate the support either way i wish it, if it was dark this would be cooler but look at this apple shirt so i don't know if you could see it when it's not dark this panel is led and it's flashing let's see if i'll turn this off let me see if I make it dark. <laughs> Turn off my light. Is it doing it? This is so cool. There it goes. Got it? Oh my gosh. I was hoping this would be one of a kind. I was hoping it would be one of a kind piece, but it's not. So I thought, oh my gosh, this might be like Chris Lynn, 10K on the Bay or Daily Refinement. What if this is like those Apple shoes that he got, that rare collab, but it's somewhat um not super common but somewhat common it's probably just a 20 30 dollar shirt i actually i have a bunch of other apple products and some of the some of them are kind of unique i might just do a bundle with them sometimes uh, products like this you know their employees only gifts or prizes whatever and there are collectors for that kind of thing so we'll see i thought that was cool um gosh i have so much some hard goods. I found some more Lisa Frank stuff. Lisa Frank, it goes like this, right? It goes in roller coaster rides. Sometimes it's really good. It's hot. Everybody's collecting and adding to their collection of Lisa Frank. This is, let me show you something. This is not vintage. See that logo? That's not truly vintage vintage. But that's okay. I'm still, it's interesting. I'm still going to put it with my collection. The, I've got, I've got one. I can show you. This was like a dollar something. I've got one I can show you here. 
bear with me. I'll show you. I've got a bunch of Lisa Frank stuff up here. I mean, I've got a bunch. I thought, well, let me wait till it comes back around and gets hot again. Or I might bundle it. Okay, see this? See that logo? The capital L, capital F. That's one of the more vintage logos. Okay. I used to buy all that stuff for my daughter. My daughter's 30, 28, 30, Anna. And of course, when she was in elementary school, it was that was all the rage, Lisa Frank. So I kind of loved it too, right? As mom, young mom. But um, so I would probably buy her more than she really needed because I liked it too. Anyways, yeah, it's kind of cool, Melinda. Thank you. Um, so this was kind of rare, a pair of rock revivals at the thrift store. This was Goodwill for only $8.99. Really, $8.99 in the men's department. I think what the deal was here, because, you know, they're hip to that is see how frayed they are on the bottom. I think they just, and they're distressed, but you, we all know that's mostly factory distressing, right? So I'll probably just clean that up a little bit, disclose everything in the pictures. Uh, the distressing is fine with most people. So I think I can still pull probably about 40 bucks pretty easy off of these men's rock revival. Don't, if you're new, do not confuse rock revival with Rock Republic. What is that? Kohl's? No, that's just a, not really a copycat, but you know what I mean? Like where they try to come, okay, like poof. Have you ever been at the thrift store and you're going through the racks and you see that little tiny co metal copper thing and you're like, oh, it's a free people. But guess what? It's a poof. And you're like, poof, be gone. <laughs> so, because it's not worth anything. <laughs> um, in the haul video, I talked about the Ralph Lauren jacket, and I said, don't confuse that. If you watch my sold video, I mean, that I did the other day. And I said, don't confuse it now with when I go and get the ones with the crest and the buttons, with the horse buttons. This is what I'm talking about. This was two pieces. I don't even care about the pants. The pants are kind of dated, high rise. Oh, they are flat front so that's good because flat front is more in style than pleated definitely right now did you guys know rich people that high-end pants are lined they're like lined in satin they just hang on you so nicely look at that sometimes they're half lined these bad boys are fully lined yeah higher end clothing sometimes there's a reason but anyways even though this is just a lauren ralph lauren the reason I get these is because of these buttons. Let me make sure that you guys, is that working? 3D relief with the little horses on them. Let me try this one. Okay. Anyways, I never failed to sell these. The last one was $70 with this on, with these buttons, different styles. Equestrian, some of the keywords that I'll use. The 3D relief button. I'm never afraid to buy them. I don't think I've ever paid more than $10 for one. And I'm always saying if this one doesn't sell, I do not care because I am really wanting to top off the buttons and make me a mix match collab. Um, I love to do the upcycle. I, I say that all the time. So I'm never afraid. I will probably go ahead and throw the pants in on this, but I'm going to price it as just the jacket. I don't even care about the pants. I'm, someone might. They're not very up to date. Again, thank goodness they're flat front, but I will probably put this one up for probably start about 80, you know, cause I, I do best offer. So that way, um, you know, I can take a little less. Let me move these purses. And then the other one I found with the crest, these do well too with the nice crest. Okay. This is embroidered like a real patch crest, good buttons. 3D relief buttons, okay? I don't know if you can see that. And again, it's just a Lauren Ralph Lauren, not the greatest in the hierarchy, but these are some of the pieces within this middle range label that you can get money. Something like this, it depends on um, 
let's see, fully lined, yes, fully lined, the fabric content and the style and the color, it can be anywhere from $40 to $100, okay? So always take a look at these. How much did I pay for this one? Where's the tag? I feel like it was like $6.99. Where is it? $6.99 half price. This was at the ARC, a local chain in a few states. So $3.50. And this will probably go for no less than $40, no less. I haven't finished my research. It may end up being more than that with the fabric content, okay? All right. Ooh, I got a mess. <laughs> I don't want that to get wrinkled. Guys, let's do these purses real quick so I can get them out of the way. This is, um, it's not a, 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 a real popular label. Dowly? I don't know. D-A-W-L-I. But it's genuine leather. It, there are some on eBay. Genuine leather studded very late 90s, early 2000s. So I think that this is like has a very bougie look. So I think I can still pull about $40 for this. Um, not bad, right? So grabbed it because it was real leather, even though I can't remember what how much it was. It was something like five or six dollars. Another Dezigwal. I just sold a Dezigwal on Poshmark last month to a cute little girl. She was so sweet. I already talked about it in my sold video yesterday. Um, this one was $4.99. Great shape once again. Dezigwal. You'll notice very colorful patterns. Different than Vera Bradley. It's going to be contrast, mix and match most likely. It'll be embroidered or have a name plaque. Dezigwal. They also do clothing that sells well and bedding might be other things but that's all i know of so far um the designer started out in spain so it has that influence lots of bright colors you'll see a lot of mandelas this one here is a smaller shoulder bag so probably on this one probably around 30. okay desigual clothing too i learned something new on this dang it I looked it up and I already forgot. Okay, I got it covered to protect it. What is this called? Bosom Buddy Bags. I can't show you, it's in there. Bosom Buddy Bags. They make these little purses and they all have some kind of brooch decoration. This one has a rhinestone enamel frog. I don't know a whole lot about these. Obviously some kind of boutique brand. But this purse new was probably over $100. And when I looked on eBay, there's some selling. So I'm hoping to get about $35, $40 for this, for it to be relatively quick. Just a little wicker rattan. I paid $3.99 at the Goodwill. I don't know if you can see that. But <laughs> lots of different styles and then with different kind of themes, um, a brooch that they say, yeah, they say you can take it off and wear it. So bosom buddy bags. Some of you, especially some of the jewelry girls that I know, they probably know exactly what this is. But for $4, I gave it a chance and I was pleasantly surprised when I got home. All right, let me get some of this done. This was a haul just the other day. I just popped in for about an hour, so I just threw it over here. This is a different haul. This, <laughs> this... I pay $12.99. That seems crazy, right? But here's why. Seedless. Seedless Clothing Company. You're not going to find a lot of it. I'm going to take my time and show you. Seedless Clothing Company. You can go to their website. Um, they were started not too long ago by someone in California. Um, the guy's somewhat of a social media influencer. They are now famous for the Seedless 420 party and their affiliations with High Time Magazine. So yes, this is a 420. Um, this is for the 420 counterculture, which can't really say counterculture too much anymore. Um, let's just say 420 culture now. So if i don't think it was a collab i think it was just straight up but even just their t-shirts are like 30 dollars or so this jacket hopefully is pretty rare 
what was that? Just a little piece of paper. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm going to price it kind of high and just wait because it's a smaller little niche these people are, have started, but they're growing. So they're growing the cult following. Um, I think the last 420 party they had, I think I read online, there was some old school rappers there like Snoop Dogg, who does not love Snoop Dogg, whether you're 420 or not. Uh, method man <laughs> you know and then some of the new some of the newer people so that tells me that this cult following is probably going to grow so i'm hoping it does something like the sneaker heads where like seedless clothing company people or high times people are like i want this in my collection too so i'm gonna clean it up and probably put it at about 80 and not budge just wait not budge this is gonna be a niche item um, a couple more pieces that were interesting. This was half price, four fifty at the Arc thrift stores. I thought it was a trip or a lip service. Those of you that sell the steampunk or the goth, is goth still in? I don't think they call it that anymore. And you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say trip, T R I P P, or lip service. Um, I wore a lot of lip service in the '90s myself, but this is a new one. Red balls, new to me. Red balls on fire, London. So same good price range. Um, I should be able to get somewhere between 40 and 60 for this. Here's the label. Okay. You would notice it and you would think, oh, ranch, steampunk. Maybe it's a double D ranch or again, it's a trip. It's a lip service. So you probably wouldn't pass it up. That's going to be good. I learned a new label in that subculture or that genre. Okay. I love this vintage cape. How much was it? $10.99 half price, $5.50. I went to the Saturday half price, $5.50. Isn't this great? Nice little vintage. Your hands will come out this, okay? They'll come out this. Awesome, huh? Tweed. I haven't looked at the fabric content. British character woolen. So I'm guessing wool, luxury fabric. Here for vintage people. There. This is fabulous. Some vintage girl is going to love that. Right? Right. Let's see where we are in the chat. Okay. Why is it doing it like that? Hang on. There we go. Joan B says, wish we had a Stein Mart here in New England. Yeah, because it's really nice. It's kind of a rare breed. There used to be these type of stores all the time in the 80s and 90s. It would be like a family owned higher end boutique. And then they might like make another one in the next town, the next town. So they kind of turn out to be like a smaller chain if you will. And they always had more unique items and then, a, you know, a section of the higher end items. So if you wanted to, you know, something that was a little different, you know, you would go to these stores or if you had a little bit more money or something for something special. Um, I can remember to see Elder Beerman's uh, when I was in Dallas, Marie Level. Oh my gosh, Marie Level was so expensive. Um, Anyways, it's been a while. That used to just be the thing. All right, some Joseph Siebel shoes. Most of us would know to pick this up. Half price, three fifty. Is that it? New with tags. I mean, brand new, never worn. So new without box. So this will probably be about thirty, forty dollar. It could po possibly be more. I don't love shoes though, so sometimes. I don't know what it is about shoes. I don't love it, but I do sell them because I find such great things. Um, that's a good label, all leather. But I'm going to go ahead and sell them quick. Okay, these are Victoria's Secret. Um, I don't do a lot of Victoria's Secret, but these are these sell well. I think I can get 30 to 40 for these. These are the sweater slippers. Um, somewhat more of a rare find, and these ones are blinged out with rhinestones. But these are Victoria's Secret Pink. I paid half price, $350. I don't know if you can see that. 
but I bought these because I knew that these sweater booties brought a little bit more money. Okay. So we'll see how those do. I'll put a lot of this will go on Poshmark and eBay. Hang on. Let me wipe my hands. Cause I have not cleaned those shoes yet. So hang on just a minute. Okay. Huh. I just washed them with rice, milk, and water, but better than nothing, right? Okay. Got that done. Oh, wait a minute. Hard goods. I do hard goods still. And I just watched Thrift Club sell Loretta um, do her little, do her part on the reseller revolution that they've kicked back up and revamped. So I'm like, yeah, hard goods. I do kind of like hard goods. You know, I have hashtag deal for hard goods. So I got these half price. They were a dollar piece. These little Chantal ceramic baking dishes in the pink heart. I think these are worth about 15 a piece. Kind of like, um, not as pricey as La Crusette, if I'm saying that right, but along that line, okay? So those will go in hashtag deal. And then some Nerium. I think Nerium is an MLM or home party brand, but kind of kind of pricey. Nerium. That's not going to catch it, is it? There we go. This is the Age Defying Night Cream. I paid $5.99. Re it's brand new sealed. I don't know how much it was new, but resale value on eBay is around $20, $30 for this size okay the size not a sample size but i'm tempted just to keep this still sealed the date's fine so i'll probably just keep this for myself okay all right moving on moving on put this here so i can see oh my gosh now there's some more shoes some Miss Moves. This is the first time I've ever found this, but this is good. This is a good label, you guys. You can sell these on Poshmark, I think, pretty easy. Um, a little bit higher end. So these little ballet slippers, I'm guessing maybe $30 because they're still in decent shape, okay? Um, but some of her stuff is worth a lot more, the resale value. So this is the first time I've ever found a pair. Hang on, I wash my hands again. And then I picked these up just because they look like quality, right? And so they're foreign. Alberto, Fermani. I don't know anything about it, but I knew quality. You know quality, leather, a real stacked leather heel, okay? And leather sole. That's going to tell you something. These are made in Italy. And then they're made in Italy. So you're like, yeah, look them up. And these were probably three or $400 shoes new. They're in mm, about an eight out of 10 condition. So little Mary Jane, sort of Mary Jane heels. I don't know, 40, we'll try, we'll see. It's not like a big, big name, you know, where someone's, you know, but the right person will eventually come along. You guys know I'm okay with a little bit of long tail. I'm perfectly fine. Oh God. And then these are like Sorel, they're Canadian brand. These are called... I can't even say it. It's kind of a French. La Canadier? Okay, I can't even show you the name. Darn it. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Yes, I can. Because these kind of remind me of like Sorel from Canada. So these, here, you guys, you guys pronounce it. So these are quite expensive to buy. So I think with these little booties, I looked it up and it has a name. I'll go back to that for my keywords. I think I can probably get 50 bucks. That's what we're going to try, okay? These were expensive. These were expensive at one time. All right, there we go for that. Oh, my gosh. Really? Okay. Back to my, oh, back to my favorite clothing haul. This also with the Ralph Lauren. This is Ralph Lauren Denim and Supply. This is a very iconic T-shirt. It comes in different versions. See where it says RL, Liberty RL, Ralph Lauren. This is one of their famous Indian skull. This here. Denim and Supply. Okay, not Denim and Company. Denim and Supply. Ralph Lauren. So this is, how much was that? $349. This 
who knew? I don't even know. What do they charge for their t-shirt? Oh God, it's soft. Probably about 50 bucks for their t-shirts. I don't even know. I don't buy Ralph Lauren new. That's out of my league. Um, but I think resale value on this is somewhere around 25 to 30. So the first time I found that I heard about these, they come in a variety of different kinds of Indian skull heads, some of them with the headdress. So when you see something like that, check it out and see if it's one of the Ralph Lauren Indian skulls. Again, some of them will have full headdress, you know? Okay. I kind of want to keep that, but because it's iconic. It's iconic. All right. Um, this was retail arbitrage at Burlington. There's another one. Burlington Coat Factory has changed in the recent years. There's that's good retail arbitrage. Um, this kind of makes me think of a 420 skirt, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, half price, 550. The reason I paid that much is twofold. Vintage and a theme. What is that? Scottish, little Scottish terrier. So I often do well with the sweaters with the little dogs of some sort on them. Okay. Let me get a drink, you guys. Hi, Lindy. <laughs> it's me working on my channel. This is a long haul. So I'm telling people come and go as you please. If you're watching this later, feel free to go down to the cog and put me on extra speed and just see the labels. I'm going to take my time and do my haul, working on my channel. Soft surroundings. Most of us know that, right? Soft surroundings. This one's really cute. Swimsuit cover-up probably or something like that. It does have, I'm going to tell you some keywords. It does have pin tucking, little pom-pom trim. This would be a tunic. Or shorter dress. $5.99 was okay with me because soft surroundings is a good label. I just sold a soft surrounding thermal contrast cup on Poshmark. $40. Just like that. It was the haul that I did a while back. And I told you guys, I said this soft surrounding thermal, this Madewell graphic tee, this um, Wild Fox distressed sweater, they'll be out the door. And they were good prices and out the door pretty quick as soon as I listed them on Poshmark. Um, this is a good brand, okay? Chloe, if I'm saying it right, it might, be some, it might be said more fancy, like Chloe or Chloe. That, this is more, this is like a cheaper label from them or would you say diffusion line perhaps you might say but it still sells for a good amount this will probably be a 30 40 dollar dress but if you see that label just close that's their main line and that is super high end definitely pick that up but i'm not going to leave a c by clo for 5.99 because i know that it's still a 30 or 40 dollar dress even though it's you know the cheaper line and then along that theme, I think this is a mommy and me. Agatha Ruiz de la Prada. I think it's one of those mommy and me lines, like Matilda Jane. Can't remember now. I looked it up at the thrift store. Something was good about it because I paid $6. It's in great shape. Again, don't quote me, but I think this is one of those mommy and me lines. I think this dress should bring about $30 pretty quick. Okay. Um, one of my staples, Tasha Palazzi. Love it. I very rarely have a piece of hers that does not sell quickly. I have one now. I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm going to have to mark it down. It's an anomaly. Maybe it's the color. I don't know. Off season. I don't know. Usually her stuff sells like that. Like double D rants will sell like that. Um, unless I have it priced a little bit higher and sometimes I do that and sometimes it's worth it. Anyways, $7.99 was justified. Again, this label. If you don't know it, write it down and look it up and get familiar. And this, because it's the Indian blanket look, definitely. This probably, I'll probably get about 40 some dollars for this. This is a snap shirt. New, it was probably, I don't know, just under 200 This does a lot of the ranch prairie some people will use it for boho, um, Western cowgirl chic, a lot of the great dresses and jackets. Mm, love it. 
Okay, let me pull these out together. Lafayette 148. We can still do these, but some of them just aren't going as well. You just definitely have to be like, look at it and be like, is anybody going to like this pattern and this cut and this fabric? $6.99 for this one. I think this one's okay. A little bit of a classic look with the tweed. I liked the fur trim. Green, not my color, but I know some people that it's a color for them that they love. So and it was a good size, 14. And then this one because of the unique foil print. So $5.99. So again, Lafayette 148 is still still pretty um, viable. And there's, for some reason, they're always in the thrift stores. So I don't know why, because they're a good fit. I don't know why they end up there. There's nothing wrong with the way they construct their garments, really. Okay, there's that. So both of those, I'm hoping about 40. Okay, vintage. 90s, late 80s, 90s, platinum by Dorothy Sholin. Might not have said that last one right. Let's look at it. You'll find these. Um, $3.99. I'm picky about them, okay? They have to really scream 80s, 90s, okay? But this one, here, look at the buttons. That's why I said, yeah, let's do that one. See those big, crazy buttons, 3D relief. So I'm thinking I can probably pull 35, 40 if I wait for the right person. Escada. I don't know why I find so much Escada. I just sold a silk shirt for around 40. I don't know why. If I was still in Dallas, I would totally get it. Escada was everywhere, especially in the 90s. That was like the rich one of the rich women's labels of choice. Um, but here's another one. So I sell them all the time when I get them. This one's not necessarily too vintage. I'll have to look at the label chart and see where we're at. But there's one. And there's one. So Escada. I don't know if they're still made in Germany. I don't think so. Let me see if this one has a tag. But that's this is wool, so that's good. Can't see where it was made. I don't know if they're still made in Germany, but is there German influence? German designer, Escada. The vintage stuff was. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Here we go. Here we go. I love this. St. John. Oh my gosh. Don't be afraid of the St. John. I've sold some pretty rough looking, super vintage that I had to get softened. The fabric softened up. The Santana knit softened back up. I just sold one a red dress for 50 I showed you in the sold video yesterday that was pretty darn vintage super vintage by the tag made for me Marcus I still got $50 out of it this one here oh my gosh I about died what did I pay for that it was something ridiculous $10.99 with the skirt with the palettes the palettes are like the glued on little thin sequins so to speak they're called palettes pretty common for the higher end stuff. And then some be seed beading. Oh my gosh. This one here, I'm probably not going to let this go any less than like 160. I'll wait. This is a good piece. I'm telling you, I've got experience with St. John. This is a good piece. Nice little zipper pull. It's not their logo, but it's encrusted with rhinestones. Palettes front and back. Ugh. Great size, size 10, made in USA, of course. Great. I am in love with that. That's a money maker. This one's okay. $6.99, though. You're not going to let a St. John sit for $6.99. This one's okay. I don't know, $40, $50. All the buttons are good. Nothing's wrong. It's got a logo metal tag. That'll be helpful. Because the sometimes the buttons will have the St. John logo. These do not. But there is a little metal name plaque in the back so for this one i'll probably just say 40 50 but that other one is epic and I, this is another one of those intuition pieces like i'm looking at their pajama bottoms and i see this i look at anything long because i'm tall so i see this little pink chiffon sticking out and i'm like let me pull those out i'm like those aren't pajama bottoms 
And so I just look at them. Well, these are St. John too. Just a random, there was probably a shirt or something. I couldn't find anything. But how much were they? They were in the pajama half price, so $2.50, right? So again, they're silk, they're lined. Not quite car wash, but split on one side. Not quite car wash with the strips. But um, someone's still going to want these, even though I couldn't find probably the top or the jacket or the tunic, probably a tunic. So I'm just going to guess $30, $30, $40. The right person will have to find them and know what they're going to put them with. Okay, along the lines of St. John, not as high end, sometimes vintage. I don't think this is really a vintage one by the label. Castleberry Knits. So I've sold some of their vintage and their pieces before. So this will probably sell for about 50, 60, perhaps 80, because it's really pretty with the gold threads and the embellished buttons. It's a good size. Smells like it's been freshly cleaned, made in USA. So I won't pick up all Castleberry. I won't pick up all the Castleberry vintage or the newer. This one was kind of nice, right? I'm thinking, I bet you this probably goes around 58, 56, okay? I gotta get a drink. This is a long haul. Okay, let's see. <laughs> LuLaRoe. Okay, let's take it easy on the LuLaRoe. We're not sure how this is going to go, right? So bankruptcy, all kinds of issues. There'll either be a cult following that still has a love-hate relationship with them and are still looking for pieces. Like they're diehard. They love how certain pieces fit and feel. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Most of it I'm passing on. The price went way up at the thrift stores. I think they know that it's kind of over and the prices are coming back down a little bit. This one was $6.99 where last month it was probably that Goodwill probably would have priced it at 20 or if not even put it on their behind the counter rack. But anyways, um, you know, it's a small, I said yes, because it's black. A lot of times the solid colors, especially um, black, tends to go for a little more. I'll find the name of this dress, Amelia, Carly, Diane, whatever. And then with the exposed zipper. And pockets, dresses with pockets, right? So I can't tell you how much for sure. The market's really volatile right now on LuLaRoe. So, but six, um, $7 seems quite fair. Uh, again, because of the color solid black and the exposed zipper style is somewhat on point good thicker fabric too and then this one $5.99 this is a LuLaRoe denim jacket I didn't even know and I don't know yet is this aftermarket or did LuLaRoe design it like this I don't know that yet but I think the jackets are a little more rare so for $5.99 I'm like let me buy this and hang on to it again let's see what happens with LuLaRoe market the resale market on LuLaRoe. It, some of it could become collector pieces. Like, you know, this is um, could be all notorious, right? <laughs> so we'll see. So that's why I have some LuLaRoe. Okay, more interesting pieces, which is what I do. <sighs> Anko, A-N-C-A-N-K-O. You're not, it's, I can't prove it to you, but by this, wait a minute. Let us get it up there. It's got a weird font. Sorry. There it goes. It's got a weird font. Dry cleaning tag. Um, this is made in Johannesburg. I paid $6.99. It's got a belt. Some kind of serape cape. But when I looked it up, I found out that these are made in something about Johannesburg and Chicago. Anyways, these have a little bit of a following. Kind of like a little bit more expensive than like Jansko, uh, the Jansko fleece things that will sell pretty easy for $30, $40, $50, Jansko. This Anco is something. It's going to wait for the right person, but that's all right. $6.99, would you have done it? It's a little bit of a long tail, but it'll work. 
kind of mohair. Okay, this is Eddie Bauer. And let me talk about this. $16.99 is a lot. But the reason I did this, this is a um, extra large and it's good for tall girls. I like to buy, I'm a tall girl. You guys know that by now. I like to buy things and cater to my tall girls. So I'll put tall friendly or tall girl and then I'll go promote it in a special, some special groups. This is not new with tags, but you can tell this is still brand new and it's current. It is called Girl on the Go Insulated Trench. New with tags was about $140 on their website. I made notes. So I'm going to start it at about 60. I kind of want to keep it, but I'm not going to. Um, so I found the name. It's current. So that's what I feel like why it justified $16.99. Okay. I need to get that up too. <laughs> um, I'll pick up crazy European brands. They'll, they eventually sell. I'll show this to you, but I don't know what it's going to mean unless you're a hardcore vintage person. But you can see this little Oktoberfest, Norwegian, Scandinavian, right? So someone will finally find this and need it for something. Either it's part of their heritage or it's going to be a theatrical play or something like that, okay? It's long tail, but it'll work. Follow me. You can watch my store and see. Again, it might be a long tail, but we'll see what it does. It's fun. I like that. Oh, another Lafayette 148. Okay, another Lafayette 148. Animal print. Some girls love their animal print. <laughs> that fur coat that went to, this is a shocker, New Jersey. <laughs> so, oh my God, I'm being stereotypical, aren't I? But anyways, this has a little bit of a silver sheen to it. It's cute, right? I'm going to guess 3040. Let me put that with the other Lafayette 148s. Oh, gosh. Okay, this one was new with tags. It's a unique piece. $6.99. But there are some for sale. They make this crinkle puffy stuff. Um, this is kind of cute, though. It's kind of a little bomber jacket, moto bomber jacket, not asymmetrical, though. But with this copper shimmer, and it had really long sleeves for a tall girl. So another possible long tail item, but unique. Um, when someone does find it, some fashionista, tall fashionista is going to be very happy. Some people like to wear things that are different. I tend to be like that myself. When I go out, Donna Karen, straight up Donna Karen, not D-K-N-Y, Donna Karen, New York, the, the cheaper line. Straight up Donna Karen, the most luxe velvet I've ever felt, $5.99, fully lined. I, who knows how much this was. There's no crushed pieces on it, thank goodness. Um. Dang, this is some high designer stuff right here. Who knows how much this was new, depending on where they bought it at. I don't know. It could have been five, six hundred dollars. I'm gonna price it up pretty high. I think over a hundred just to start and see. The market will tell me if I'm wrong. But I bet you I don't sell this for anything less than sixty dollars. Not a Donna Karen. Straight up. Mm -mm. Size 14. Uh-oh. That might fit me too. So I'll wear it before I sell it too cheap. And here's something I learned. Oh, God, I love this. I've sold her stuff before. I don't find a lot of it. But you guys, this is good. Here, this is a good one for you clothing people. Whenever I do find it, it sells like that. Skirts, things I've sold in the $40, $50, $60 range. This coat is awesome. Look at it. Look at this little duster with the um, little fun zipper accents. I don't think they're pockets. They're just meant to be fun. And it's a duster and a, a nice fabric, a little bit of a texture to it. You see my notes. Resale average on this kind on her stuff for jackets like this. This is called the Barcelona jacket and it comes in other colors. I made a note when I looked it up because I tend to forget. 
So I noticed when I did this a week and a half ago, the resale value averaged 60 to $80 on eBay, right? I paid $6.99. Let me check the sleeves. This, I think I will also market to tall girls. I love that. Eva Varro. Here, you missed it. I know sometimes like we're just, we're working and we're listening to our friends do their hauls and then we might peek up every once in a while. So Eva Vara, dresses, skirts, pants, it's good. Okay, you guys, here's another new with tags, $6.99. This is a Tucker dress and it's not the Tucker for Target line. It's not the collab you know, how Target's getting all these designers to do collabs, right? And then they'll be a little bit lower price for a few pieces. You know, the ones that run out real quick or the girls are standing outside in line to get, I think, what was the last one? Was the last one Hunter? Has there been one since Hunter with um, Target collabs with the high-end designers? Anyways, this is a Tucker, still new with the tags. I paid $6.99. It's silk. Again, not for Target. Tucker, you know how it's spelled Tucker. So retail on this dress, I'll go look it up and find the name. More than anthropology, I can tell you that. But, but the crowd is along that line. So I'm going to guess this dress sells for about 40 to 60, somewhere in there. And I'll try to find out how much it was new. Because sometimes I'll add... In my listing, MSRP, we know, let's not argue about that, um, was, you know, we all know that's a whatever. Okay, these were so popular. They're, they don't cost a lot. Lapis was the leader. Lapis was the leader. You guys remember these. They were everywhere. And then you can pick them up at Ross or TJ Maxx or Marshalls for a couple of years. You could pick them up for like $4 or $5.99. Well, that's starting to taper off. But there's some people who still love this. And it's it could be for theatrical. It can be for the steampunk. It can be for the um, Victorian, Edwardian. It could be a skirt or a dress. So that's why I picked this up for $350 because they're starting to finally get harder to find. Some people love them. Um, this might even be this might even be Magnolia Pearl crowd. Um, dang it. Magnolia Pearl, I love that. I've been trying to find a line to buy from, some lines to buy from that kind of have that look eBay or uh, Magnolia Pearl is finally catching up with us and they're turning us in if we use that in there in our keywords. They don't like it anymore. So that's all right. We know we shouldn't be doing it. I did it a couple of times. Um, so I just do Magnolia now. Um, but I got busted for Magnolia Pearl. So I tried Magnolia Pearly. Sometimes I just put Magnolia and Sometimes I don't do anything at all because it probably is borderline rude. But anyways, so that's why I picked this up. Good color. So I, I won't get a lot for it, but I'm going to see what I can do with it by marketing it to one of the fashion subcultures. I'm going to see if that works. My own curiosity. All right. I think that was it. Who's here? Oh, <laughs> i just been rambling. Hello, Wade. Who else popped in? TT, hi. Thanks, you guys. I've just been rambling. Like I said, I'm working on my channel. I'm always in someone else's channel. I need to nurture my own channel. So I'm just rambling. I need to get my monetization back. When I do, I'm sharing it with all of my reseller friends that watch. I'll be doing some giveaways. Well, I think that's about it. Oh, and don't forget to keep an eye out for the tentatively called Generation 1099. Um, you guys know I'm on the in eBay influencer team, right? The seller diversity advocate and then another team that hasn't been announced yet. So my bid to them was Generation X. And so I'm doing something. When you're an eBay influencer, they ask this to, if you're on social media, they say, would you please post at least three things eBay related a week? 
and they don't pay. No, it's just volunteer because I'm an eBay girl. That's my first love. So I do that. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Again, we're not paid and we're allowed to be mad at eBay. Sure we are. They just ask one thing. And this is so reasonable as a mature adult. It's very reasonable that if we are upset about something and we do talk about it, will we offer solutions? We can come to them. They will make sure we fully understand the problem and if there's a solution, and then when we talk about that, okay? So don't think that just because I'm on the influencer team that I'm going to be blowing smoke up your skirt about eBay. No, I'm mad at eBay about something right now. So I'll fill you in on that later when I see how it goes. I've got till the ninth to work that out. Um, so no, I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat everything and be all hunky dory, but I am an eBay advocate because I love eBay. It works for me and it has. So again, um, you know, I may bitch one off about something about eBay that I'm not thrilled with, but I'm going to offer some kind of work around a solution too. Okay. So, um, anyway, so another reason why I'm putting together this little once a month show with people from gen different generations is because that's one of the things I had on my mind when I applied to be an NBA, eBay influencer, something I feel is important. I'm first wave Gen X and I feel it's important to, um, for the younger people to say respect elders, so to speak, the ones that deserve it, you know, and to learn from them. You know, we've seen some things, we've we've been around the block, right? And then it's so important also for us older ones to embrace the younger ones. Like they help keep us fresh. I have, if it weren't for my younger daughters, my millennial daughters, I'd be listening to Led Zeppelin all day long. You know what I'm saying? The Rolling Stones, like you know, they turn me on to some newer things. They help keep me open-minded and fresh. And so that's my ideal. So I've got someone in her 20s, just barely in her 20s, just barely a millennial, someone in their 30s, 40s, 50s. And we're going to talk and we're going to share. Also, these people have other side hustles that I think you're going to find interesting. So um, I'm meeting with Julie as soon as we're done with this, it's almost time for us to have our call. I've been trying to get her for a year. And like I said, she moved and then eBay opened, which was fun. Best week ever. And, um, and then I got married. So now we're back on track and I've talked to her about my new project and she likes it. So, um, but I can't round up all the details by myself. That's not cool. So I want to round them out with Julie and the other people. And then I'm going to tell you guys who all it is. And I think you're going to love them. Most of you already know them. I gave some hints. One's a weirdo. One's a hippie. <laughs> one's barely a millennial. So I think you're going to like it. It's just once a month because we're all busy and we're all wanting to work on our own channels too. But I hope you guys will be supportive on that. So as soon as we work out the details, get that on the docket. I'll let you guys know. In the meantime, if you're new to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe. As we say, hit the little bell. If you want to know when I'm going live, I will be going live more. Um, I did say that when I was done with the haul, the clothing haul, that I would hang around for a Q&A or ask me anything. So if anybody's not, I mean, we've been doing this for what, over an hour? I don't even know. Anyways, I'll hang out for a while. I will put on my glasses. And look at this. And if anybody does have a question they want to ask, I can hang out for a while. Okay. Let's see where we're at. Yvonne, come join me one out of my channel. Um, heck yeah. We talked about that at eBay Open, but I guess we all, oh, I know. I said, yeah, wait, because I gave you a heads up. They're going to announce the seller diversity advocate program. I so I asked if we could wait. And then I, I don't know, I guess we both forgot. But yeah, sure. Oh my gosh, I'd be honored. Wait, are you kidding me? You and Ashley and the little, uh, I met your little baby. Oh my gosh. What? Yes, we will talk. Thank you. Thank you. Hippie style is hot and the festival is coming this summer. Just let's see Kooji sweater and boots. Kooji's always a good find. Audra, always a good find. What I miss while I was just babbling and babbling. Kim, you're so sweet. <laughs> Wendy popped in. I already said hi. 
you guys, you know, Lindy's my friend. She's on a roll. Oh my gosh. Her motivation Monday. Did that not rock? Did that not rock? She took us on a little roller coaster ride. Oh, thank you, Audra. Thank you. Well, you know, I just, I try not to fight the quick flip and all the bread and butter. I just try to go a different direction, right? But in all fairness, I don't have to make a living. I have other streams of income too. You guys, now I'm a caretaker for my dad. That pays. Um, I do poker, make a little bit of money there. A couple other side things. I'm on merch. I do have some things on merch that do well. And um, so when I retired early from the salon to, you know, help take care of dad, my husband, boyfriend at the time said, yeah, I'll move him in. You know, that was so great. That was so great. I didn't even have to ask or anything. It was more his idea. So dad's with us and that's going fine. He's real mild mannered. It's going fine. Got a little dementia setting in. My dad wrecked his Harley coming back from Sturgis in 1986. So I've had to kind of keep an eye on him on and off for years. Oh my gosh, for the last 30 years. But it wasn't until a couple years ago that dementia started kicking in. He's 76 now. So, you know, family, it is what it is. Family is family. We're not, I'm not going to put my dad in a home just for a little bit of dementia. He's perfectly mobile. So he's got a laptop, taught himself the computer. He tinkers around, goes to the thrift stores with me. Anyways. My point was, to be fair, I don't have to hustle and grind every day, right? I can afford to have fun with it and buy the more long, you know, the unique pieces and, and do it long tail. Um, I usually make about two to three thousand dollars a month with my reselling side hustle. I think that's pretty good for part time. I really do. I, I think that's good. So any of you that, you know, like the way that I do things the things that I buy and want to just be part-time, then, you know, I'm your girl to teach you with some things about clothing. If you need help. Um, if you're new, I can point you to, I know just about everybody and what they're doing. So if you're new, you can DM me or write me and say, this is the ideal I have. These are the things I like. I'll point you to the right direction of who's doing what and match you up. I'll be like, go follow this person, go subscribe to this person's channel. I'll help you out that way. Um, as an eBay seller advocate, I promise to do that, um, to hook you up with whatever resources you need, whoever in the social media community, um, you know, is doing what your goal is. I'll tell you who they are. Ooh, I can ramble, huh? I refuse to put my mom in a home either. Oh, do, are you a caretaker too, Audra? Yeah, as long as he's mobile, I mean, if it gets to the point where he's not mobile, I mean, I'm, th let's be forthcoming, let's be real. Caretaking is, it can get hard, especially if they're immobile. I might have to tap out then, right? Because I don't want to hurt myself. But so far, it, you know, it's fine. It's fine. He does his own thing, so... Survive and thrive on eBay. We have to be flexible. Yes. Tell us. Yes. Tell us your entire circle of income. I can relate. <laughs> That's it. And then, of course, um, my boyfriend and I just got married. You know, he's corporate. He would totally freak without a steady income. This is not his groove. This is not his jam. He would freak. Okay. Now, like I said, when we first started, will he probably do something? If he chooses to retire 10, 15 years, sure, probably, um, just to stay busy. Um, it won't be in my business because he'll micromanage me. And so I love him enough and he loves me enough that we know not to try that. So, <laughs> you know, but he'll probably, you know, maybe he'll do Amazon if it's still viable. Maybe he'll sell Harley parts, you know, something that he enjoys. I will tell him, you know, he won't have to do it for the money either. I'll be like, pick something you have a passion for, something you enjoy. Now he's a poker player too, because when we first met, I'm like, you best learn how to play poker or you will be a poker widow. So he went straight about learning how to play poker. And he's probably better than I am at this point. He plays more than I do currently. I had to take a little bit of a break, um, you know, to get dad kind of 
to get used to being a caretaker, to adding that, you know, um, retiring from the salon and picking this up more and then having dad here, you know, but I've, I've got at a good place. I'm not going to be, let's tell the truth. Caretaking, you do need to, it's kind of like having an addict in the family where you slowly need to learn how to deal with that addict and how to protect yourself. I don't mean to, I don't mean to um, compare it to something so extreme, but I've got an addict in the family too, my brother. So caretaking kind of reminded me of that. And I was like, oh, okay. I need to join some caretaking groups. I need to read up on this from people who are more experienced than I am because normally I'm just like a maverick. I'm just like, I can do it. I can do it by myself. I got this. No, I have learned over the years to not try to reinvent the wheel all the time. At least go, at least go read and see other people's experiences from a lot of different sources, find the common denominator, and then add what I think I need. So I did that with caretaking because you can easily let it over take your life and consume you as well to where you have no energy for yourself and maybe even fall into depression. So <clears throat> it took me a little while to realize the things that I was doing that dad can do for himself, that he's here because we love him and don't want to put him in a home, but I'm not his maid. I'm not his entertainment committee. Do you know what I'm saying? So it took me a while to kind of get that worked out and get him used to his new home. So we did that. Got a computer, goes to church on Sunday. We did that. Corresponds with people. You will know when it gets to be too much. Yeah. That's what I think. I, I'm, I won't let anybody guilt me or anything like that. And a home they land up so much it was difficult. You know, you put, I just feel like it would just expedite his death. He would be so sad and lonely. You know, here I take him to church. You know, he goes to church on Sunday. I take him, we've added getting massages because people need to be touched and he doesn't have a wife or a girlfriend. Take him to get massages. We've added that to agenda. You know, I, I see to some of the things that I know a person needs to not fall too deep into depression, right? So... Hi, Swamp Picker. Hi, Glenn. But yes, I pay myself for that. Um, I retired early. Do I pay myself the, what I was making? No way. But with Steve's support, I don't have to. You know, I don't have to pay rent and the mortgage or anything like that. I just pay my own bills. And I paid my car off thanks to eBay. That was one of my best posts. It was last year, early last year. I paid my car off. So there's that. So my personal bills are pretty small. And then Steve picks up the rest. Um, so, you know, what I make taking care of dad, two to 3,000 that I usually clear on reselling, a little bit of poker money coming in, a little bit of merch money coming in, a little bit of another side hustle that I haven't fully divulged, a little nervous to talk about it. Um, you know, I'm fine. I'm fine and I'm happy and it's fun. So. Just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. But if someone's wanting to go full time and replace an income, then I can point you in the right direction for that. Or this can be scaled up to some degree. But you're going to need help. If you're grinding, 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 and it takes coffee and energy drinks and you're not happy, and then you're doing something wrong. You should get to a point where you can afford to have help. So... And most of the good people that I know and follow, they do have help. They're not trying to do it all by themselves. That would be miserable. All right, you guys. Let's see. Right. That's what I was thinking, Audra. I'm like, wait a minute. Also, for his own self-esteem and for just exercise, like, instead of bringing dad a glass of water, I'd be like, have you had enough water? Maybe not. Okay, go get you a glass of water. The exercise, just walk into the kitchen, right? It's just little things I hadn't thought of because at first, you know, you're just like the loving daughter and you're like, oh, let me take care of you. You know, you're my dad. That's what I'm supposed to do. You know, I had to realize, no, I can't be doing all this. It's not good for me. It's not good for him. Exactly, Audra. I'm glad somebody gets it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that.
Well, anyways, watch out for, I want to recap something in case you weren't here earlier. Watch out for the giveaways as I um, continue to try to grow my channel and get back appreciation. Like I said earlier, I'm not really going to promote it too much on Instagram because that brings out the sweepstakes giveaway people that aren't really in our circle, that aren't really in our niche, okay, that aren't really resellers or care about reselling or couponing or thrifty or 1099 lifestyle. So I am... If you're not familiar again, YouTube has also added, and they're going to be adding more features. My goal is to one day get off of Facebook and Instagram because of the bad dealings of Facebook, who now owns Instagram, and they are inundating us with ads. My goal, I would be so happy just to leave that platform, not because of the people. I love everybody. I know how to navigate a social media and, and stay away from people who you know might bring me down. I don't have that kind of issue. It's Facebook itself. It's the things that are in the news. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I would be happy if everything could be done on YouTube. And YouTube keeps adding features to where that's possible. Um, once I reach a certain subscriber count in hours, I'll get some more features too that I can add. But there is a community tab where we can make posts just like we do on Instagram. So if you are just looking at your video notifications, you might miss some of us that are making posts as well and having conversations. So watch out for that because that's probably where I'm going to talk about giveaways. Um, I'm going to give away those t-shirts I showed you guys. So cute. I bought four of them on my retail arbitrage if you missed it earlier. Um, I'm going to give away those. I got some reseller mystery boxes I'm going to be doing and giving away, selling and giving away. I've got some gift cards and whatever else. And again, when my monetization comes back, I will share my YouTube earnings. I will share a portion of that back because you guys are helping that AdSense money to come in. Um, even if you have YouTube Red, it still helps. I don't have monetization now, so I don't have commercials, but I will be getting it back. And, um, you know, YouTube Red is $10 a month. And the people that you love and want to support, they still get some revenue. We still will get revenue from that. So it's worth the $10, believe me. Um, so I would probably promote like doing that too. Like, Hey, I'll pay for your YouTube red for a couple months as part of my giveaways because it's totally awesome. I didn't do it at first because I was like, no, because the people that I love that I'm supporting, they won't get any um, kickback, you know, to buy new equipment and whatever for their time. But then I found out through Tim Moyer, who is the big guru that helps us with YouTube. I found out through his channel and I verified it that yes, even with YouTube red creators get, you know, a little bit of a kickback. So it's fine, you know, to help, to help, um, you know, support the channel. Yeah. Some of the big ones are making bang, but you know, even when I was monetized, I might get a payout every couple months. And I usually just bought a new camera or a ring light. I bought my snowball <laughs> one, one with one of the checks, you know? So, but anyways, I plan on sharing that back. All right. Have a working hangout. Very helpful. <laughs> I will probably just go live sometimes. Just, you know, I need, um, you know, to get the watch time back up. I probably will just go live sometimes and just ramble. You guys can watch me work and I'll chat every once in a while or y'all can chat amongst yourselves. So just bear with me. It's either that or I got to do some lol cat videos. I don't know which ones you guys want. <laughs> All right, I think I will go get a little snack and um, start listing this stuff, right? All right, you guys, I really appreciate the support and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.